You don't need to be able to code Python and understand what Java is to be able to earn a side income or make progress towards running a full-time AI agency. I built a custom GPT that takes rookie level Billy Basic AI prompts and turns them into something meaningful. With a decent prompt, it's pretty easy to connect it to Slack, Microsoft Teams, or Discord. If I'm honest, I wasn't sure if I should share what I'm covering in this video. It's taken me a fair few months to figure all of this stuff out, and I'm worried about creating competition as I continue to build out my own AI agency services. But I've been listening to a lot of people who are a lot more successful than me say that the value is in the implementation, not in the knowledge itself. And so I've thought, screw it, I'm gonna share what I figured out and hopefully things will work out for the best. I'm Deck. I spent the past six months building an AI agency whilst working a full-time job, and I spent nine years working at IBM and Salesforce. But I wanna spend more time scuba diving, and this is the best way I can think of to do it. My goal with this channel is to keep you and your business relevant during the AI renaissance. It doesn't sit well with me that the privileged few will benefit from the AI gold rush, and this is my attempt to change it. Even if you don't have any previous AI knowledge, if you make it through to the end of this video, you'll know how to build a custom AI application and connect it to a platform you or your customer uses every day. I'm gonna start by sharing some common ways you can use these apps. Then I'm gonna show you how to create these powerful AI applications with your own personal data easily, before then showing you how to connect your application to Slack, Microsoft Teams, or Discord. If knowing about the latest and greatest AI tools is your bag, I've created a full guide to the best AI tools that you can access using the link below. I hope you appreciate the hustle. Of course, if you want me to build one of these AI tools for you on your behalf, I'm open for business. The best way to think about how these custom GPTs can be used is when a human has tons of information that they have to know and they need to find out something specific. So some of the most common ways you can use these custom knowledge-based GPTs are new hire employee onboarding, customer self-service, case studies for sales teams, information exchanges, for example, I don't know, maybe you've published a book or you've got lots of content that you own and you want people to be able to search and find out specific questions from it. Employee FAQs, and maybe you've got like a handbook or something and you want your employees to find out how much holiday they're entitled to or what expense policies you have, and bespoke manuals. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how you can ingest an employee handbook and then get your employees to ask specific questions of it. Like, I don't know, how much holiday they're entitled to through over the year, or what your expenses policies are, or even like what their notice period is. Now to do that, link down in the description is my GPT that takes basic prompts and improves them. This is a really valuable GPT because it basically levels anything up uh, by figuring out the intent behind it and then applying some more kind of advanced prompt engineering guides and tactics to it. So let's see it in action. So once we've got it, once you've downloaded it and you've got it open here, start by typing improve this, and then we're going to give it a basic prompt. Now I've got here role, you're an effective classification system, task, listen to the user's question and search the knowledge titled the employee handbook. That's a PDF that we're going to upload in a minute. So I've got that prompt, not that great, but we've told it to, we've told this GPT to improve it. So we click that and it should now improve it. Okay, so we've taken our basic prompt and we've leveled it up using the GPT that I provided that you can access using the link below. Now it's time to connect it to Slack. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a program called runbear.io. So we go to runbear here uh, and then we're gonna go to go to app and we're taken to this page here. So the first thing we've gotta do um, is we've got to create a new assistant. So you click down here and you go to assistant and we're going to click add assistant. So in this example, we're going to build a GPT from scratch, but uh, you can actually just see, as you can see down here, you can connect custom GPTs and, and other things as well. We're going to use OpenAI, but obviously depending on your use case and your preferences, you can use whichever one you like. So once we've then got our, we've named our assistant, we now have to put in the instructions. Now I've copied and pasted this from the GPT that we used earlier. So I click paste here. We've now got our GPT. So we've got role, task, context, goal, instruction, style, and tone. So we've got all of that there. And it's now, now we need to choose the model that we're going to use. So as default, we use GPT 4.0, which is the time of recording is the most up to date. But as you can see, you've got lots of different options to other ones. There is a price implication. So ultimately what you want to be able to do is use the cheapest GPT that enables you to get the job done. So this one, we're just going to stick with the regular GPT 4.0. But have a play around with that and obviously by having a good prompt good and effective prompt up here you'll get a better output and can potentially use a cheaper model now the next one here this is quite interesting this is how we access openai's gpt for this demo we're just going to use the standard run one but that's actually more expensive so if you're using this on a kind of a larger scale 
it might be worth them uh, creating or using your own OpenAI account and using the API key to connect it into Rumbear. As you can see here, you get a million free tokens to start with and afterwards a regular price of 10 of plus 10% fee. So it definitely will be cheaper if you're going to use this a lot to use your own OpenAI API key. But for this example, we're just going to leave this on. But definitely be aware of that. Next, we need to add our knowledge source. So obviously in this example, we've got a kind of an employee handbook that we're going to be asking questions of. So on my desktop here, I've got my employee handbook. So I'm just uploading that here and that's now been uploaded. So it's got a PDF with all the information that it needs. Interestingly, we've got all these different actions. Like if we need image interpretation or generation, web search, we're not gonna use any of that for this example, but obviously if you wanna play around with those, you, you can. We've also got some more advanced options down here. So if for example, we've got things like temperature, so it gives you nice descriptions, but like temperature, if we switch that on, that determines how the kind of randomness of it. I'm just going to use that as standard, but have a look at these prompt token limits as well. Again, if you're thinking around costs, that's quite an interesting one because you can limit, essentially kind of limit how much these GPT is costing you in terms of its running fees. Once you're kind of happy with all these preferences, we're then going to click create. So we click create and we've now got our bot has been created. Great. So with our bot created, we're not actually going to connect it to the channels yet because I'm going to show you how to do that. So we now click down to our last bu uh, our last button here, which is integrations. And we said Slack, but obviously if you want to use Discord or Microsoft Teams or HubSpot, Zendesk, you can use these ones down here, but, but we can use Slack. So I'm going to click manage for Slack. We're going to scroll down to custom bots. And what we're going to do is create a new custom bot. So our app is going to be called FAQ bot. I mean, it's two words we're going to have a custom handle so this is when we're in slack what how you call or, or kind of summarize it so in slack when we need to ask it a question this is what we're going to press at type at and then to, to ask it i'm going to call it faq so if we type at faq, at FAQ in slack or then ask the bot the questions and this is with short description your helpful faq bot Brilliant. If we want uh, a logo or an icon, we can do that here as well, uh, as well as actually in Slack itself. We need to do it in both of those. I'm not going to bother for this example, but obviously if we want, if you want to do this, go for it. Click next. And we now have to ensure that we've got public access. So if we click on this link here, um, and then we follow the instructions we've given. So we click on this link. We need to go down to hard coded information. Click this button here to say I've reviewed and removed any hard coded information. And then that's done come back again we can customize the app icon and you give the instructions there if you want to do that we're not going to do that in this example but if you want to follow the instructions so now we've created an assistant and we've now created a custom bot which we can call by type typing at faq we now need to connect it to our slack account so to do that we go to our connected workspaces up here click add connected workspace what we're going to do is take the installation link for our faq bot that we just created so i'm going to copy that and then in a new window i'm going to paste that into the search bar on the top literally what it's just copied onto it onto it so it's copy and paste and it brings up this page here so i've already slide, signed into slack under my Declan kirk slack account obviously you need to be in kind of signed in online uh, to whatever you, slack account you want to install this in if it's your company one or if you're doing it for a client you need to be able to access their slack account or what i did is give them the installation code so you get them to do this bit so once what you need to do is install the bot onto the account so you click allow so now we've got our faq bot installed onto our slack workspace what we need to do now as the last step is to connect our assistant that we created earlier to this new faq bot so we go back to assistants we can see our FAQ bot up here and it's saying no channels. So what we're going to do is click connect now. We're going to select a channel. And we're going to Declan Kirk FAQ bot. And so it's public. We want it on all channels. Click next. And then we click create. And you can now see that the De Declan Kirk FAQ bot, all channels and it's connected. So our basic bot here, and as you can see all of the code and everything that we put in is now connected by the channel here. Okay, so we go back to Slack we can see that we've now got an FAQ bot down here. So if we click on the FAQ bot, um, let's see whether this works. I'm going to type at FAQ, how many days annual leave do I get? We should now go and search that directory of the PDF, which was about a 20 page document that we uploaded and come back with a reply. So yeah, that's great. Like you can see it's working. 
Employees at Salesforce are created per cranary repeats based on their time of length of service. Zero to one, one year, 10 days, one to five, 15, five years plus 20 days. Pretty harsh um, holiday policy. Uh, I used to work at Salesforce. It definitely wasn't that just for the record. So there we have it. So we now got a, a, a one there. Let's maybe go into this channel here. And if I want to say at FAQ, do I do if I'm sick and can't work? Oh, they're saying it's not invited to the channel. Do you want to invite them? Yep, let's invite them. We're now getting the response. So it's now going through there and it's, and it's pulled out our answer. So it's saying, if you're sick and can't work, you must notify your supervisor as soon as possible, ideally before the start of your work day. If you want to find out how to create virtual voice AI assistants with just a few relatively simple steps, then I highly recommend you watch my ultimate beginner's guide to voice AI that you can watch here. Thanks, and I'll see you there. Peace.